Welcome to show, everybody. Huge episode. Happy Monday. We're talking five practical tips to dominate your fantasy football draft. Five fantasy football draft tips right here for you. These are super practical. They're really going to get you a competitive advantage over the competition for 2021 fantasy football. Now, I want to do this show because I really want to give you guys some practical tips because I know the mainstream just tells you, hey, these are the top finishers last year. Draft them in that order. And that's it. So these tips are really going to help you guys crush your leagues. Now, if you really want to dominate your leagues and not have any questions about and really just feel confident going in your draft with absolute certainty, knowing you've got, you know, the, arguably the best uh, analyst in the game behind you, I really implore you guys to get the 16 round draft solution because I live and breathe this stuff. And this is going into my fourth year, 16 rounds, and this works. And I, I've gotten so many good testimonials on this. It's it's absolutely phenomenal. Joe, you know, I crushed my leagues. I had the advantage because 16 rounds actually gives you that advantage because you have a backup plan for a backup plan. All the optimal players, you avoid guys like, let's say, Odell Beckham, you know, four years in a row. That was, he was acquired in the first round for those, you know, three out of those four years. Last year, he was acquired in the third round. Average ADP told you to stay away. Busted four years in a row. And I can go on with stories. Austin Eckler's, Kenny and Drake's of the world. You know, all these guys. Michael Thomas last year, for another example. 16 rounds is the game changer, guys. I genuinely implore you guys to get it. The prices will be going up in a few weeks. Get it for the lowest price of the season at thefantasyfootballcouncil.com. I've also linked it below. You will absolutely love 16 rounds. It is the game changer. Get it below, okay? All the optimal players drafted in each round. Sleepers, breakouts. Everything's there for you guys. Get it. Video training. Okay. Link below. All right. So let's talk about these five tips. Please also leave a thumbs up. It helps the channel and comment below any tips you want to share with everybody. Let's make it super interactive, super fun. And uh, let's, let's get to it. Okay. Also follow on Instagram. Got lots of exciting antics going on there as well. Okay. At fantasy football counselor, jump on Instagram, click the follow. If you're new to the channel. All right. So five tips to dominate your draft guys. Very simple. Number one, I say it all the time, but I want to implore you guys how important this is, is do not follow the mainstream sheep, okay? So we we know this. Every single year, the magazines come out. I have a magazine right here. Let me just get off screen here and just let me grab this magazine. This is going back a couple years ago. This is uh, 2019 magazine here. On the cover, you've got Antonio Brown, Odell Beckham, and Le'Veon Bell. Now, in this exact year, believe it or not, you may not believe me. The people that have been following me for years believe me. I told you to stay away from all three of these guys. Why? Well, Antonio Brown was going on a new team, which means Big Ben didn't throw as much, right? Big Ben, I mean, sorry, Big Ben threw a lot to him, and he wasn't going to get the volume that he was going to get. He wasn't going to get the 168 targets. I'm like, yeah, he's on a new team. I didn't even mention the amount of trouble he was going to get into, which I, I kind of talked about, but didn't really focus on that, right? Odell Beckham Jr., we know what happened with him. He busted, and Le'Veon Bell. When he went to the Jets, everyone said, hey, guys, draft Le'Veon Bell in the end of the first round. What I say? I said, stay away. He's overrated. Why? Because James Conner and D'Angelo Williams a couple years ago performed the same or even better in that position, given that position when Le'Veon Bell was sidelined. So you got to look at situations. you got to think outside the box and say, hey, okay, this doesn't make sense to me. This looks like last year's top finishers in the same order. Well, what about the variables? What about the new offense? What about the new quarterback? What about the new team? What about the lack of targets? What about the new receiver they brought in? What, what about this? What about that? you got to look at the entire thing, and that's what I do in 16-round draft solution. So tip number one, do not follow the mainstream advice, period. Just don't do it because, again, they're doing what everyone else is doing. It's going to be on ADP, and you will not get a competitive advantage. I'll give you another example. A couple years ago when Pat Mahomes, before he broke out, I got him in the 10th round. While people were drafting whatever quarterback was, you know, had finished good that the year prior, they were drafting him ahead. I got Pat Mahomes 10th round. Another example, Lamar Jackson last year. Everyone said draft him second round. I said, no, pump the brakes. Let's get Russell Wilson, Josh Allen, the sixth, seventh round. Much better value, way more upside. Pinnacle year for Lamar. It's going to come down. And again, the mainstream kept saying second round, second round. And again, this goes in the magazines, four-letter networks, everywhere you go. So do not follow their advice. I've given you a ton of examples just now. Do not do it. I implore you guys, okay? Tip number two, very important, and I'll tell you why it's important. Go robust RB. Okay, I'll tell you why this is so important. Number one, we see wide receivers have these pinnacle years and they come down. And you saw it with Michael Thomas last year. You see it with wide receivers like Odell as a perfect example. I keep picking on those guys because it's facts. You see these wide receivers have these pinnacle years and they drop. This particular year, Devontae Adams, right? 18 touchdowns last year. MVP season from Aaron Rodgers. Is that going to continue? He might have a good year, yes. But things happen when, when Cinderella seasons happen. Injuries happen. 
declines happen. Things happen. Other wide receivers come in and get some love, right? Because not only do the defenses key in on, on that player, like they're going to key in on Devontae Adams in the red zone, they're gonna, there's other opportunities that are going to happen. Other wide receivers, like I said, come in. There could be a decline, could be an injury to Aaron Rodgers. So many things could happen. They got to account for that variability, right? So robust RB is strong because you are basically secure. You're not basically, you are securing the most rare and scarce position on the roster. I did the count on this. There's only about eight or nine actual running backs that are going to be minimal committees, meaning that the running back behind them isn't going to significantly impact their fantasy football value. And that RB is going to get a ton of volume. There's about eight running backs in the league that do that. Your Saquon's, your Christian McCaffrey's, your Derrick Henry's, your Dalvin Cook's, only like a handful of those guys, right? So it's very important that you secure them early on or you're going to be left with a guy, for example, a Tariq Cohen. I keep picking on these guys, Tariq Cohen, Philip Lindsay's of the world, guys that are complementary backs that won't produce on that high level that you want to plug in into your RB1 position. And the nice thing about going robust in the first one, two, three rounds is that you are basically securing your RB. Let's say if you have two RBs, uh, in your slots, you got to fill in. You got to have a, two RBs in your starting lineup for for fantasy, right? You basically have two RB ones in your RB one slots. Does that make sense? So you're maximizing those positions, if that makes sense. So robust RB is very important. It's a very rare position. Running backs put up a lot of points. You know, you need a lot of depth at running back because running backs also are prone to injury. So you want to load up as on many as running backs. You can have that depth on your roster because see it every single year. That is the position that people really fall for like they really fall down on right they're like oh my my running backs are low i need a running back i need to you're they're, they're scrounging to try to find a running back they're scrambling right so robust rb for many reasons that i stated again very scarce position high injury position uh very you know you need to have, have depth at that position so go robust go early secure a running back with minimal committee this is very 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 important and again we saw this last year lamar jackson second round i mean you could have got josh you could have secured your three running backs which i did and got my josh allen in the round six we're going to look for value, and I explained all that in the 16 rounds. If you haven't got it, get it. Prices is going up very soon. All right, number three, anchor your team with an ace quarterback. And again, do not over – oh, there should be a, uh, a little, you know, paragraph there, a little asterisk there saying do not overpay because we see it last year, right? All the top finishers for last year, they're, they're pasted over and said draft them in that order, right? So this year you're going to get your Josh Allen on top, guys like that. But there is value that you can get, guys that are proven. And with with quarterbacks, and the tip number three is anchor your team with an ace quarterback, yes, but you want to get a quarterback that has been proven, right? With quarterbacks, the statistical data is there to show you that, hey, this guy has performed year in, year out. And there's a pattern there, right? You got to look at all the variables. Who are his receivers? How good is his O-line? How good is his durability, right? So it's very important, guys. You anchor your team with an ace quarterback, but a guy that is proven, that's important. There's also another quick point on this number three is always back him up. So I always, always, always get a backup quarterback. Why is that? A couple reasons. Number one, maybe there's a lack of performance from the guy that you thought was your ace quarterback. So let's say I really like Justin Herbert this year. He had one good year. I see proven talent. He fits all the criteria, upside youth, all that stuff, good receivers, good team. But the problem is maybe he busts. Maybe he gets hurt, right? Whatever you got to do, you always have to have a backup. And another reason I always say back up your quarterback, get the ace quarterback and back him up, and I talk about this again in 16 rounds, is because sometimes people in your leagues can be a-holes, right? I'll give you an example. I was in a two-quarterback league once, and basically what happened was I only got two quarterbacks in that league. I didn't get a backup quarterback. This is going back like five, six years ago. And I learned a very valuable lesson. One guy in on the, on, in the league basically had, I think there was eight bench spots or something like that. This guy hoarded like four other quarterbacks on his bench. And then in comes bye week, and there's no available starting quarterback starting. Now, this is a two-quarterback league. I understand, Joe. I'm in a single-quarterback league. It doesn't matter. It's just good to have two quarterbacks. So I always say this, and it's such a good, valid point, which I'm at. It's kind of like a bonus in-between tip. If you're in a one-quarterback league, get two quarterbacks. If you're a two-quarterback league, have three quarterbacks. This is very important. Depth, 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 very important. So, again, back to tip number three. Anchor your team with an ace quarterback that is proven and get yourself a backup. Tip number four, Okay. Do a lot of mock drafts. And again, this is like practice. Perfect practice, right? Got to practice perfectly, right? Train hard, fight easy, I always said when I was in MMA. This is very, very important, okay? You got to do a lot of mock drafts. Why? 
Well, it's very simple, guys. If you guys are in a draft, and let's just say you really want to get James Robinson this year, because I like James Robinson. Hopefully, I get it for value. If I see that James Robinson keeps continuously going in the third round in all of my mock drafts, or second round, for example, I know that if I really want James Robinson, I may need to act on this and pick him up before someone else does. So, for example, if I, again, we want James Robinson at the end of round two, I've done 100 mock drafts, anticipate he goes in round two, I know to get him there, right? Now, if I wait to round three, he's probably going to be gone. And by doing a lot of mock drafts, you have this like six cents for when players come off the board. So it's very important that you practice. A lot of people are a sheep mentality. They're going to be going based on ADP. Now, you also got to take into account, let's just say, you really want James Robinson at the end of round two, and I'm giving this as an example. I don't know where his current ADP is going to be because at the time of the this recording, it's like early April. So the ADPs really start falling into place after the NFL draft. That's when I release the first version of 16 rounds. You can still pre-order it, but the first video comes out after the, a week after the NFL draft. So going back to this, guys, you got to know where he falls. Now, if you have a Jacksonville Jaguar team uh, uh, fan on in your league, he may come off at the beginning of the second round where you keep seeing him come off at the end of the second round based on your 100-mock draft. So it's awareness. It's knowing when to hold him, know when to fold him, and anticipating and, and you know when the value is and where to get the value. And by doing that, you're going to have a significant advantage. Okay, Once you know which players to draft, you'll know when to draft them for the optimal value. I'll give you another example. Last year, Josh Allen, I knew he was coming off in and around rounds 5 to 7. I believed in Josh Allen, and I really wanted him. So I got him in round five and sometimes, right? Because I knew that there's a chance that he could be coming off in round six or seven. I couldn't take that chance because I really wanted him. So sometimes I went round five, okay? That's a perfect example, and he did really well, okay? So tip number five, the final tip here. Again, please leave a thumbs up. Make sure you guys are subscribed if you guys want to win your leagues and get that 16-round draft solution. I cannot implore you enough. I implore you guys, get the 16-round draft solution. You will be very happy. It's like having me at the draft with you. It's going to be amazing, okay? Tip number five, aim high on the depth charts. First of all, I should be studying depth charts and understand who's going to get the volume, okay? And this is seen based on last year's performance. Are they going to get the volume on the team? Have they brought in somebody else? How is that depth chart going to be adjusted? Is the player that I am drafting on my team going to be getting the volume? Now, as we, you know, study the depth charts, aim high on the depth charts, which is tip number five, aim high on depth charts, this is really going to make your roster optimal. I'll explain how. For example, if let's say I'm in round one, I get, let's say, a Saquon Barkley. High on the depth chart, I plug in my RB1. RB2, let's just say I get James Robinson, predicated on the fact that he is the RB1 on the team. He's going to get the volume. Now I've got two RB, uh, I got two of my RB2 spots, assuming you start two RBs, plugged up, okay, with RB1s. Now I look at wide receiver. Let's just say, for example, I am, let's say, I, this is a bad example, but let's say Diggs fall. Keenan Allen, let's say he goes to the third round. I like Keenan Allen as long as he stays healthy with Herbert, right? I got a wide receiver one. Now, instead of getting, let's say, an Odell Beckham Jr. round four where he has not performed, he could be a wide receiver two on his team technically, or even getting any wide receiver two, let's say Godwin. Here's a perfect example. Let's say, instead of, let's say, going Godwin, okay, round four, I can get another wide receiver one, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Stick with me here. Julio, for example, is I think going to be better value because he is ranked pretty low. I think he's ranked 12th amongst wide receivers at the time of this recording. So I could technically get Allen and Julio, who are wide receivers ones, instead of reaching, not necessarily reaching, but getting a wide receiver on a two because I can get more volume out of that. Now, a lot of people will say that's a bad example because Ridley's kind of ranked ahead of Julio. He's technically the wide receiver one. I don't believe that. But again, this is thinking outside the box. The point I'm trying to make is all your roster positions, this is a summary here for, for this last point here where you got to aim high on depth chart. This is some advanced stuff. People don't talk about this. But your whole roster, th stick with me here, your wide receiver, one, let's say I have three wide receivers, try to make sure that all of those slots are filled with wide receiver ones on that respective team. Does that make sense? Okay, so don't always go for the popular name. Going back to tip number one, don't follow the mainstream, right? So aim high on the depth chart. Always try to get guys that are, that are in a position to succeed, that are going to get the volume, that are talented, and that are somewhat proven. Okay, does that make sense? And later, you can start gambling after round seven, eight, nine, after you've anchored the base foundation, which I'm going to talk about the sneaky seven and 16-round draft solution. 
once you've got that foundation, you can start taking a little bit more risks, okay? So again, I've, I've done this for years. I know how to optimize a roster for year long. Make sure you have a backup plan for a backup plan, and that's what I do. So again, recap. Number one, do not follow the mainstream anal analysts, right? Analysis, whatever, the cookie cutter stuff. Go robust RB, secure the most scarce position. Tip number three, anchor your team with an ace quarterback. Get him a backup, right? A backup plan for a backup plan, okay? Mock drafts, number four, make sure you do a lot of mock drafts. And tip number five, aim high on the depth chart, okay? Very important. And study those depth charts as well because they're going to be a significant factor in your success for your year long. This is practical yet advanced stuff, guys, right here. Some of it's common sense, but a lot of people don't implement this. They say, okay, I'm just going to draft on ADP. I'm just going to go wide. Like, if I were drafting on ADP, I'd just go, like, I would have just went, like, Michael Thomas last year and Lamar Jackson last year. You're one and two last year, and number three would have been, let's say, Austin Eckler if he fell to the third round, right? Your, your roster would have looked like in round one and two would have been Michael Thomas and Lamar Jackson. It, it doesn't make sense, guys. It, you you got to think outside the box, okay? All right, guys, that's it. Subscribe, leave a thumbs up. Let me know what you guys think. I appreciate you guys being here. Five tips to dominate your fantasy football draft, fantasy football draft strategy, whatever you want to call it. Right here for you guys. Going to be helping you all year long. Subscribe. Leave a thumbs up. I appreciate you. And get 16 rounds. Link in the bio or thefantasyfootballcouncil.com. I'm out. Thank you.